32 participants, so I yeah, I guess we're ready. We can do it. Okay, we're recording and live on Facebook. Okay, so um, everyone, welcome. Welcome to our virtual uh, March 2021 indoor meeting. So I would like to welcome everyone and also welcome first time guests and new members. So um, with that, um, tonight's topics is objects of the heavens and our uh, oh, and, and by the way, I am Ann Murphy. I'm the co-chair for the Raleigh Astronomy Club. And Mike Keith is also the co-chair for the Raleigh Astronomy Club. And I'd like him to introduce the speaker. So Mike, take it away. Yep, yep. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Peter, our speaker, author of uh, Objects in the Heaven. And uh, he is a fellow astronomer. Um, and the reason why um, we've asked him to speak uh, today is because of his uh, book, uh, Objects in the Heaven. And uh, I know I've sent out a couple of uh, stories from folks, uh, or at least from, from me, as well as uh, another uh, member as well, uh, that have used this book and have found it incredibly useful, uh, especially for beginners. Um, and I know when I was first starting, this was really, really um, you know, a, a time saver given the fact that it's so difficult um, to finally get time out under the stars when it's not a full moon and your work schedule isn't crazy. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, this helped me make the most of that time, especially if you weren't ready, um, you didn't spend all your time kind of thumbing through lists or trying to figure out what you needed to do. Uh, this was a really, really useful book um, that I, I found. So um, Peter, the author, I've connected with him on, on uh, uh, Facebook. Um, and um, just a great guy um, and a uh, you know, very, very, very uh, helpful book. So um, to note to everyone, we will be um, um, drawing, we'll be doing a drawing for this book. Uh, so if you are interested in being part of the drawing, uh, go ahead and put your, um, in the chat session, if you can just write um, drawing, the word drawing, and then put your name, um, we'll Kind of comb through the chat session we'll pick up those names and then uh after peter's talk we will go ahead and uh pick a name at random and uh, we'll have a um uh, personalized uh, version of this book sent to you from peter so with that i'm going to turn it over to our speaker peter okay i need peter i'm going to mute everybody and then you'll have to unmute yourself is that okay i'm unmuted right now i'm just yeah, well you're my mouth shut muted. As soon as I Are hit you? this button. You can. Okay, you can unmute. There we go, okay. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. This is my first uh, Zoom presentation, so uh, bear with if I stumble a little bit along the way. But I wanna thank you all for inviting me and uh, hope I'm coming through all right, uh, visual as well as uh, audible. Um, <laughs> I, mean, uh, I have a uh, PowerPoint presentation to walk you through my book and uh, tell you why I did it and, and, and how it came to be. Um, let's see if we can't, uh, let's see, view, uh, enter full screen. There we go. You got the realm of the galaxies there by any chance? Or, no, share screen. There we go, wait a minute. There it is. All right. That come up? I see uh, Michael uh, nodding his head, so that's yeah, good. That's good. All right. Well, and there we go. And there. there's objects in the heavens. It. Uh, this is uh, my first of two books. Um, uh, this is Objects in the Heavens version one, uh, came out in 2002. And after about three years of pretty intensive research. And, um, it, you know, I started out with binoculars, as uh, I hope a lot of people did, because it really gives you a, bit, a broader view of the, the, the whole cosmos. But 
whether you have binoculars or a telescope, it's really handy to know what you're looking at. And I had no clue. And uh, that's what started me on, on the, uh, uh, the search here. I got a, a telescope from a friend of mine. I uh, rescued it from his garage, uh, 1972, I think it is. No, earlier than that, 1956, Edmund Scientific Super Sky Ranger, six inch F8. And I used that for almost 15 years. It was terrific. But it helped me catalog and, and uh, just connect more with the heavens. So what started the project uh, was the curiosity. Uh, what was it that I was looking at and what all was up there? Uh, what is, you know, uh, my line is kind of, uh, you know, what's up there and what can I actually see? Uh, so then I started researching throughout all sorts of books and uh, Burnham's. I, I got a, the copy of the three volume Burnham's that sent my head reeling. Um, and it, but it seems, you know, that every source I looked at, there were no two sources that agreed on what would go into a list for a given uh, constellation or whether it was the type of object, magnitude or much of anything else. And so I started collecting and just collecting and collecting. Um, yeah, like I said, incomplete resources uh, and just not agreeing with each other. Um, my designer sense of order comes, I've self-employed graphic designer for quite a number of years, 45 years now. And uh, the things I was seeing just did not connect. So uh, it was my desire to learn. So let, let's put all this stuff together and, and what happens, I come up with a list. And I'm sure some of you have come up with this list too. These are things that I saw or or went to look for in their magnitude. And then that it got a little more refined. And about this time, the book started taking on a life of its own as more and more uh, objects were uncovered and began lifting the veil, as it were. Uh, but then the confusion started again. You know, how, how do I see, what, do, what is it? And so, Looking at uranometria, which is a wonderful resource, but MAG-15, I'm not going to see that with my little six-inch telescope. And uh, so forget that. And Norton's, okay, uh, star chart is real nice, and there's uh, that Cygnus, but, you know, what am I looking at, really? What's here? Nothing is listed. There's no information. Uh, this is the MAG-7 project. Okay, there is some objects listed, but, you know, they're just the brighter ones, but there's so much more. I also went through, uh, I got a wonderful Christmas present of uh, um, the Sky Atlas 2000, the whole, the large version. And uh, I went through that while compi compiling my list, and I found that I've got, you know, half of my book is not in Sky Atlas 2000. So why continue? Well, I, after talking with a lot of other amateurs, you know, Mike, what you described uh, as not having a resource that you could have right at the scope, because uh, Sky Atlas 2000, nice, beautiful. Will Tyrion did a fantastic job, but it's just too big. You can't put it right next to your scope and, and be looking. Um, so there was a definite void and uh, may as well take my book and, and run with a little bit. So I did the first edition, got a lot of positive feedback, but then every day turned up something new. I think the first edition I had 513 objects and I'm now up over 750, all magnitude 10 or brighter. Um, but in putting the book together, I had to set some parameters. Uh, you know, obviously I didn't want to go mag 15 I uh, couldn't do that. So I set it at magnitude 10, which is, you know, you can see that from a, a, from a city lights too, uh, not necessarily with binoculars, but uh, let's go with Northern Hemisphere objects only. Uh, Southern Hemisphere, almost double the size of the book with the uh, Magellanic clouds, which I got to see once. Yeah. And uh, 
Uh, but uh, after going through Burnham's and all the abbreviations that were in there, I said, well, maybe we can do away with a lot of the abbreviations, use real English, but still get as much detail as I could to help, you know, help me at the, at the scope and consequently help others. So let's get the uh, simply formatted and focus on the objects because that's what we're up there looking for. It's not, you, know, you can see the whole spread of the sky, see all the stars, put the binoculars up there. But I, I think when we're out in the evening and, or at night and you know, you're looking for M65, you, know, you wanna go for it and where is it? Well, we'll find out where it is. So the contents of the book is I began putting it together and, uh, from my frustrations. You know, basic observing details. And we'll go in and you'll, you'll see some of these um, cross-references. I've got a quote later from Alvin Huey. It says, if you want to know what uh, 2356 is, you, know, you, you don't memorize where, you know, what constellation it is or where it is. Now, M67, yeah, M42, like on the cover, we know where those are. But the, the other ones, so I got a cross-reference. Um, the moon. Actually, the moon. Um, yeah, that uh, Earth's nightlight. Um, spent six months putting it together. And I've got seven pages simple uh, uh, for so we can see what's going on there. Seasonal sky maps, constellations, and the constellations arranged with major stars, double stars. Red and carbon stars, some of my favorites. Messier objects, obviously. NGC objects and uh, 37 other cataloged objects. So I uncovered quite a lot in my research here. This is the way <laughs> when I first started, what are we looking at? You know, so uh, uh, Monoceros one of my, has become one of my favorite constellations, the invisible horse. And we look through and, you know, does that look like a horse? I don't think so. So I did this with uh, uh, putting Mon Monoceros in there and uh, uncovered quite a lot in ways of like star X, which is one of the carbon stars, very beautiful red star, and putting some other things together. The circled objects, uh, we'll get into those, but those are mag seven or brighter. And uh, here's one, we did the, uh, the MAG-7 project, but uh, this is the map that I put together that goes along with a listing across the page from it. So you can look at the list. Well, this list is continued on another page as a couple of constellations are. But uh, you see everything in here is MAG-10 or brighter. Uh, the um, uh, MAG-7 or brighter are in bold and mag seven are the circled ones. So, you know, I, I'm keeping it together. I'm not gonna focus on this right now. Let's, going through the book, uh, uh, table of contents with little tabs on the sides. The tabs will help, uh, I think, uh, let you find an area in the book, which will give you more info. You can see on the left page here, the versions that I've been through. Uh, I, I publish this uh, in an on-demand uh, source. So I can only, do, you know, I do 25 or 50 at a time, sometimes a hundred. And um, I, I did a hundred, uh, I'm on my second hundred with uh, version 6.2, but uh, keep it updated. I update the, uh, the addresses, the right ascension declination addresses. So uh, keep it going. Um, and page seven here, the on the right, I'm pointing at the screen like, like you know what I'm pointing at. Um, how the how the pages are set up uh, with the Bayer system underneath, so to know how it uh, how the uh, brightness goes. And you can see my I've got my symbols that I use throughout the book. That's uh, what's set up here. And the magnitude starting about here is where uh, public star parties, uh, th this book becomes quite useful. You know, what, what's a magnitude? Well, by giving an example like these, um, it, it helps to 
describe to the uninitiated what they are. And uh, then across from that is the co traditional constellations. The ones in bold are the ones that I've listed in the book. There's uh, 88 total, and we've got uh, 66, 66, 62 books in Northern Hemisphere constellations. The bigger picture is what really threw me. For almost 25 years, I'd read up once in a while, I'd read up, what is this right ascension thing? And I didn't get it. I just did not get it. And it wasn't coming. Finally, it dawned on me. But it took 25 years for me to understand what it was. And then the big picture started coming into play. And to know where everything is in relation to everything else, I bring that together a little bit later. Here is one way of bringing things in, still staying with a larger picture, uh, with constellation groupings. Fun stories for kids, because when you've got three or four or five, ten kids at the scope and you, you whip out the laser pointer and you go around to uh, the summer triangle or the winter triangle, uh, the winter hexagon. And uh, then I put it together with little stories of my own. But uh, I, I, I've used them several times and uh, the kids, uh, kids seem to like it. Uh, adults to make it memorable. For example, on lower left, the toy story, the toy store. Um, those five little constellations that uh, can just disappear after a while because you focus on the big ones like Cygnus and, and Vega and, and 57 and such. And I happen to stumble on Big Bird out in uh, Cullum, Illinois, West Cent uh, East Central Illinois. Um, just a, a fantastic viewing site, uh, far from uh, two hours from Chicago, no uh, horizon to horizon view. And it was in late summer and I happened to see the follow the art to Arcturus and it bounced up through to make uh, bird's wings. And uh, late, in the, late in the fall, take a look for that if you're out in, in the open, you know, you can uh, you can see it, it's, it's very large. Um, get in with telescopes, just, you know, continuing on the basics. And uh, I'm gonna back for a second, uh, including filters. I don't, I didn't know a lot about filters. So as someone once said, if you wanna learn something, write a book about it. And it just kept writing it and writing it and writing it and going on from there. Uh, because where we are, we get the solar system in there, just the little details, distances, relative sizes, brightest stars in the sky and, and the, the major stars, double stars, carbon stars. These are all what's listed in the book. And uh, descriptions on deep sky objects, messier index, uh, getting into the cross, uh, the, the cross reference list. And, uh, and here is on the far right, you'll see one observing plan for a messy marathon. I, I haven't done it yet. I look forward to it whenever it comes to it, but I've been so wrapped up in building the book. It, I get, a, get out in the backyard as often as possible. And, and I just don't have the sky for this. But here you can see there is a cross reference with uh, NGC uh, numbers, with messier numbers. And then we move on to the other than MGC, which also includes uh, Phil Harrington's star designations for asterisms and uh, pick off from quite a few observatory names. You can see that Abel, you know, Antonov, uh, and, uh, Basil, Burke. Common names, why not? Let's look up what the ringtail galaxy is or the Rocking Horse Cluster. If all you knew was, was that, go for it. Oh, on the right, on the left side, uh, two thirds of the way down, Alberio types. I have, I've stumbled across those and I have, uh, I just found uh, the winter Alberio and Canis Major, beautiful double, beautiful double. And uh, I think that's what has helped me most in making the book is finding things that I've never seen before. And now I can take the time and go to it and, and 
not hit it right off the bat, but I can find it. So list of the major meteor showers. And next up uh, is the moon, We're continuing on staying local here. Um, but this, I use the, the Lunar 100 from the uh, Astro Astronom Astronomy League, uh, but I don't get, I, I wasn't able to secure official nod from them. So I just use it as the league. And, uh, but it's, uh, I get the, the basics here more as inspiration. You know, these aren't, this isn't the, the be all and end all and, and with the ultimate detail, but, you know, at a different time, at a certain time of the year, a certain time of the month, uh, you know, here's what you can see. And so there's more to it. I'm just uh, briefly going through this. And uh, if you want to know more about different sex, uh, part of the moon, just like a different part of the, the sky, you know, there's a lot of more detailed reference that you can go to, but this will uh, get it there. Got four spreads on the uh, on seasonal uh, a seasonal map, which show the full list of the that season's magnitude seven or brighter the city objects, things you can see from the city with binoculars, hopefully, and uh, it's uh, spring and winter. Winter right now, quite a lot to be found. Uh, mag seven or brighter. And then we get into the, the actual maps themselves. And uh, aridness, uh, you know, just a very unusual one. But oh, uh, while I go to mag 10 uh, and the northern sky, uh, which means I get down to um, minus 40 degrees of, of uh, declination. That's about, uh, it's pretty good range going down south. And then gradually brighter objects to minus 45. Uh, so I have a few in there. The, um, the uh, Scorpio has a couple down there that are really pretty. And, but it, for us here, that's right at the horizon. If you're in Florida, maybe Southern Florida, you can get down to minus 50, but I'm not down there. So I, you know, maybe someday I'll expand the, uh, the book to get down that far. Uh, Virgo, I'm pretty happy with that. Virgo is, is up now uh, you know, in the, the realm of the galaxies, really uh, tickles my ivories. And so I have a special inset there with these, um, I'm pointing at it again on the screen, uh, sweeping patterns. And if you want to catch them, uh, those are uh, patterns I found helpful to move the scope. Just to imagine, you get 84 and 86 uh, right between Denny Bola and Vindamaya tricks, and they're easy to spot. And then, so to move your scope, if you got a push to, and uh, pick up all those little galaxies on the way, and then come around, get 88, 91, 90, and 89 and uh, have a real night of uh, galaxy hunting. But uh, I, I came up with this for myself because I found it helpful and I hope others would too. Uh, towards the end of the book, uh, I've got seven, I believe it's seven pages, 16 or 17 sketching rings. And I mentioned I had a second book which focuses only on uh, sketching and as a goals, a log and a sketching book all together with uh, as little different content in it and then 26 pages of this. But uh, a lot of people have done some marvelous sketching work that is uh, great. Also include us uh, website resources, places I've gone to that I find helpful and then who I am and what I've been doing. And uh, that's it. So there's the parameters that I had when I set up to make the book. And I, I hope you agree that I've uh, pretty much hit the target with that. I, I think I have. And uh, a couple other people have, have something to say about it too. You know, I always thought that the Pocket Sky Atlas was a great book, says Alvin Huey, but it's an atlas, not an observing guide. If I wanna know what the heck NGC 1023 is, for example, I need to look it up in another reference. And I solved that problem for him. Thank you, Alvin. John Kramer at 
at the eyepiece blog. Uh, OITH had me at convenient at the scope use and delivered just what this observer needed to enjoy my time at the eyepiece. Well done. Uh, Thomas Epps says uh, he's a, a mariner and he goes out with a couple of small scopes on board ship as he travels around the world as a mariner. And uh, he says, every time I go out on the stars, I appreciate it. the labors much more. And Joe Lalumia on Cloudy Nights, yeah, it's the best book to use with a go-to scope because I had all those, uh, um, the right ascension declination uh, January 2020, so it's uh, fairly up to date. I'll do another revision here in a, in a few years and uh, go 2030. Because uh, while not a lot of objects move through the heavens uh, very quickly, some of them do. Here's a scope I'm using these days, thanks to a good friend of mine who passed away and gave it to me. His name is Pete Nutini. And, uh, you know, I would drive together, uh, depending on who was driving, and I, I was Pete and he was repeat or vice versa. And uh, but he gave me this 15 inch obsession, which is a magnificent scope. And uh, that's my backyard and down here in Southern Kentucky. And I have a Bortle Green and I, I get out quite a bit with it. So I want to thank you very much for having me. And uh, uh, you can order my book at only through my website. Can't get it through anywhere else. And uh, be glad to entertain any questions. F fantastic, Peter. Um, thank you so much. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, if you haven't already um, uh, noted in the chat session, we are, for those people that, that uh, dialed in a little bit late, uh, we are uh, giving away uh, or drawing a, a, a ver or basically, you know, free uh, version of this uh, for you. So um, go ahead and if you haven't already, just put the name or put the word drawing followed by your name into the uh, chat session and we'll make sure we kind of right after the talk, we'll do a, a, a raffle. So not raffle, drawing. So thank you. Thank you. So I don't think we saw any um, questions in the chat session being raised, but um, I do want to make a couple of comments myself because I have been using this book quite a bit. And uh, um, I did get my Lunar 100 uh, from the Astronomical League not too long ago. Um, and I know a couple other people online have as well. Some of the maps that they give and some of the recommendations that they give as far as what to see on what night, they're a little off on that document. And I found this was really, really helpful. Uh, it made it so much easier. Um, I just, I just was a little scared. I didn't want to mark up my version of it. So I still used a tracking sheet, but I used this one to help me find it. So it was great. And um, the other part is I can remember that. I mean, I can never remember, you know, exactly, you know, what are all the spacings for you know, in terms of degrees. So every time I'm like, okay, what is it? I know where to go. <laughs> I just, for some reason, I can't remember it. So um, it has been a, a fantastic book. Um, and then lastly, like I, I think I pointed out, um, what I really love uh, about your book, Peter, is when you're actually looking at the individual constellations and um, half the time, you know, like, okay, what am I gonna look for? Um, you know, Peter has gone through and, you know, provided, he's bolded, um, I guess, what are some of the really, really neat objects to look at in that constellation. And he's got a great description of it. So um, it really is kind of the, um, I'll, I'll say it maybe in a um, off color way, but I'll say, yeah, it's the lazy astronomer's guide because you don't have to do all that preparation. <laughs> it's been done for you. So thank you for, uh, for that. So I guess we'll open it up uh, if anyone has questions. I can vouch for the quality of the book. I've used it for years and it's uh, one of my favorites. I'm a back bay amateur astronomers in southeastern Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Thank you, George. George Reynolds gets a special thank you in the book. Uh, he also has helped me uh, greatly with proofreading and uh, making sure this book is correct. And uh, I've, I've leaned on George many times and, uh, and he's, he's been a great champion of, of the book and about the whole effort. 
And uh, I, I did invite him here tonight. He is a NASA Solar System Ambassador and the president of the Back Bay Astronomers. Vice president. Vice president of the Back Bay Astronomers in Virginia Beach and uh, conducts uh, numerous uh, outreach programs as solar system ambassadors do. And uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, George has, has been uh, extremely helpful and, and I thank you for coming, George. So uh, I, I do see we have a, a question uh, uh, for Peter. Uh, how are the charts created uh, by hand, database, or kind of, or a combination? I, I built them by hand using Adobe Illustrator and in many layers, a separate layer for the grid, for the a separate layer for the, the constellation outline. Uh, by the way, I, using a traditional outlines, there are quite a few uh, constellation outlines to focus on uh, or they have been used over the years, as I showed a few of them, a number of them. Some are very Spartan, like that one display of Monoceros, which had, what, three lines to it? And, you know, it, it did not look like a unicorn. Uh, it didn't look like a horse. So I tried to make it look more like what it is. Um, uh, what was an, an, another one I had uh, great fun with? Lacerda, the... The um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let, let me refer to my book here. Yeah, the lizard. I, I made I made a uh, a lizard out of it, and it's there to you know to be seen. So that when you look up and you're able to find the constellation, a very faint one like Lacerda, <laughs> um, you, you kind of know you can imagine your way around a lot better, and. Uh, so there, there are a couple of cool objects in there that I have not yet seen. I've got to get to that this spring. So yes, I, I built a, each of the charts is done by hand to a given size and uh, you know to fit best on the page so that the type would come out the same size. Uh, a lot of work, but it sure taught me the sky. And that was, that was why I used, uh, I made the book in the first place was to be my classroom. And uh, uh, by the way, uh, aside from thanking George, I, I got to thank the Saguera Astronomy Club, uh, the Pacific uh, uh, Club out West in Hawaii and all the other, I, so many websites I referenced, so many print sources I referenced. I've got uh, just a, a couple of them here, you know, and I'm sure everybody has, has those and more. Uh, and I have a few more too in their library. And uh, uh, you know who else helped me? Uh, what other source helped me greatly was Reverend T.W. Webb. I, I use quotes from his book uh, to, in, uh, to open up each constellation. It just helps it gives it a different little feel and it helps it uh, uh, with a uh, perception uh, of that constellation. For example, going back to Lacerda, a small and distinctly marked asterism, glorious sweeping from Cygnus in this direction and toward the head of Cepheus, give you a feel of the sky. You know, it just, it just uh, bringing the 1850s into the 2000s. So Peter, there is another question. Yes. Um, so uh, someone has asked, uh, Mike has asked, uh, Mike Marbury, um, do the pages hold up to the somewhat damp conditions while observing? <laughs> we have we have this. Yes, on. yes. <laughs> I can tell uh, you they do. Mine has gotten wet a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> Those pages get wet and they soak up the, the yeah. dew. And unfortunately, they, uh, you know, they get wet, but they do, the, the printing does not run. Oh, um, I made them, right. I did a couple things with the book specifically. One was to use a coil binding, which kept me out of libraries and out of uh, Barnes and Noble uh, because there's no printing on the spine. But so you can turn the book inside out infinitely. 
<laughs> and to be able to use it and not break the pages. The oh, other okay. is to have an uncoated paper so that you could write notes on it. Oh. And the note taking, I think, is more important than just getting a page wet. And if it is wet, just set it open and, and it'll dry out by the next day. And uh, it does it. The, the covers are laminated. Uh, so if, if you do get into a, do, a damp situation, I use little post-it notes where I've been and where I want to go back to, close it with the, with the laminated cover up and uh, it helps protect the book. Uh, to coat each page would add 25 bucks per book. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and because that, that, that lamination is not uh, cheap. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your question. You can write, write on it. Yeah, I've had, uh, there you go. I don't know if you I can mean, tell on, on mine. It's, um, you, can, you can definitely see where it's gotten wet and you know, the, 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 the paper has you know, kind of uh, you know, gotten textured uh, from it. Um, but yeah, it's still in really, really good condition. I mean, it's, uh, mine's gotten very wet. <laughs> I've had uh, a couple of people order or reorder a book because they filled their book with notes and they had to go into a second one. Yeah. I'd be glad to give them a discount on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter, this is uh, Doug Lively from Raleigh Astronomy Club. Um, I have a question and that is, is that what aspect of the book, was there a particular uh, object or aspect uh, the of the book that was most difficult for you and then what did you do to actually overcome that difficulty oh. fantastic question had never considered that before but uh let me answer by saying it was putting together the basics mm -hmm. and to understand the the basics the the power of uh, a telescope put it, getting the math going uh, the, the, the breakdown, the Dawes limit of a double star, for example, you know, getting into the, the minutia, finding the objects was, well, to create the first book took me about 3000 hours mm. and turn my camera on. Is my camera not on? Nope. Can you, nope. Can you not say, uh, George, I see oh. you, right? Uh, well, I don't know what to do. Down in the lower the right, in. lower left corner, you say start video or stop video. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> oh, so you mean when I held up my books before, you didn't and see them? Not a thing. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, this is my first Zoom video, so. You're doing uh, good. But yeah, let me uh, get to this. This right in here. The grading the sky and the transparency, the filters, getting all those details that I really yeah. didn't know about at the beginning. And so that was that was the, the tough part. Then it was filling out all the detail and getting them in the right position. And because I was doing the maps by hand uh, to yeah. go back and forth. Oh, by the way, I use uh, the program Voyager. I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh, for my right ascension declination addresses. It's a wonderful program, very expensive, but on the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, uh, they gave it away for free. Mm. And so I got a cow. Wow. <laughs> and it's been, it's been magnificent. And uh, so I, I'm thankful for that. And it gets me the, the addresses and m many descriptions. And so... Uh, when I do upgrade a book, that is a many hours long process to upgrade every one of more than 750 objects, plus 91 of uh, mag 10.1 to 10.5. Okay. Uh, so what's that, uh, 840 uh, objects, um, 841 objects, yeah, to get all the addresses right and type them in. And I still make mistakes after after version six point two. You think I get it right, but their their mistakes come through. 
Okay. Thank, thank you, Peter. And thank great, you for that question. Thank you very much. And a great question too. And uh, tough to answer because the whole book, <laughs> the whole book was, uh, was, you know, uh, on was fantastic. a 25, yeah. almost 30 year classroom. Yeah. Wow. And I, I, I hope you all enjoy it when, uh, when you get your copies. So does anyone else have more questions? Yeah, uh, Peter, I'm, I'm just interested um, with kind of, uh, you, you mentioned that you're, you're basically publishing it yourself. Um, I was wondering if you had any uh, kind of backstory about how um, kind of some of the trials and tribulations you went through in, in trying to, to get it published. Uh, it's act I actually get it printed and I do the marketing and, and all. I started out uh, with Trafford, which is a printing on demand service. They were up in Canada and uh, they were, they offered the coil binding, which was a must, you know, had to have the coil binding. Well, they sold out after a few years to uh, a, a company in the U.S. in Indiana and, um, they were charging me 250 bucks to put my print ready PDF in their system. And so I fired them and found a different printer uh, who happened to be just uh, basically down the street and around the corner from where I lived in, uh, in the Chicago area mm -hmm. and uh, publishers graphics. And uh, they've turned out to be a great resource, very responsive, and uh, they'll print one copy or a hundred copies. And uh, I use them for my other professional work as well. Uh, just on the Loyola uh, Academy hockey program for the 10th year, oh. which is uh, they, uh, they field four teams. And this year it was really a challenge because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but so they printed the book this year. And so it, it, interesting, you know, it, it one one thing leads to another. And uh, uh, as uh, Sidney J. Harris once said, what, oh, what did he say? Oh, geez, I forgot what he said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, Sidney Harris, the late Sidney Harris of the Chicago Sun-Times had an occasional column, which he called things I learned on the way to learning other things. And that has been the journey with this book. And it's been, you know, I mean, just I, I was putting objects together, as you saw in my first handwritten um, just notebook. And from there to where I am here, it's that on the way to learning other things. Uh, one thing I did learn, a little aside that's, that's also mentioned in here, but you may not see it. The phrase, keep looking up, comes from Jack Horkheimer, right? Jack and I went to the same high school, Canadian really? High School in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. Uh, he was a few years ahead of me, but uh, but uh, my dad went there as well, and so you know, it just there there's that connection that things I learn on the way to learning other things. You know, I didn't know about Horkheimer for a long time, and then I stumbled across him, and and my dad told me about it. So it was uh, loads of fun. You know, all, all the way through. And uh, I, I must add, absolutely. I've been asked uh, by several different people, different companies to sell my book to them, let them produce the book and to get through. And I've turned them down because by my selling the book, I have that personal contact with people like uh, George Reynolds and like Mike here. And you know, like you now, that I know you more personally. And that has helped with the book in the long run uh, from, cre from finding errors. Even a couple of guys in Poland contacted me and said, hey, I'm page 62, check this out, you know? And so that, I've been able to update and fix that. And uh, so having that personal contact is priceless. Yeah, I think several of us are uh, showing, it's, you know, we'd, we'd like to claim that we have personalized uh, copies, but everyone's <laughs> copy is personalized, so thank you. <laughs> 
I was going to say, did you go to Chicago and get him to sign it? Or did he come down here? He came down here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, 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 a free tour of the heavens is included. <laughs> no. No. Well, it's been my distinct and honorable yeah. pleasure to, uh, to, uh, to meet with you and uh, to speak to you today and, you know, and to show off my baby. Yep. And, uh, as uh, repeat once said, you'll remember him, Pete Nutini, the guy who gave me that obsession scope. He said he had his MBA from Keller, you know, a real, pretty sharp guy. And he said, yeah. you've now given birth. Now you have to <laughs> eat it and keep it alive. And so that's where the marketing comes in, which is, I don't do a great job at, but, um, but I, I sure have fun with it. Word of mouth <laughs> advertising. I, I talk it up every chance I get. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, those orders from Virginia keep rolling in too. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and uh, so I reconnected with Peter through a Facebook group called Backyard, uh, I think it's Backyard Astronomy on Backyard Astronomy. Uh, Facebook. And uh, yeah, so uh, it, you know, I, I'm shocked you do not plug it at all on there. Um, and anytime a question comes up, oh, you got to get object in the heavens. So I'm usually responding out uh, <laughs> to, to folks. So. Well, yeah. if I do it, then it's shameless self-promotion, yes. and that, that's that's that, that's bad form, you know. Yeah. So very good. Uh, well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, or and I think I've I've gone through everyone's name um, we've gotten here. So um, I have selected at complete random. In fact, I put you all in a uh, uh, Excel file and basically told it to pick a number randomly. Uh, and that random person is Jim Machinowitz. So, um, oh wow, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Peter, I'll get I'll get you. Thanks, uh, Excel. Yes, I will. Uh, I will email um, your information, Jim, over to Peter, and uh, we'll get that in the mail to you. Oh, very good. So, great. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, you betcha, Jim. Hey, I want to give yeah. a shout out. To, uh, I want to give a shout out to George Reynolds. Hey, uh, there's three other uh, SSAs here in the, yep. in the club: Mike, myself, and Anna um, Anastasia Vale. So good to see another SSA oh, wow. on the on the on the uh, call. Yeah. yeah.